Hi Space Cats, welcome back to my channel. This week as part of the Yorkshire Dales Dark Skies Festival and in collaboration with Ghost Stargazing, I'll be giving a talk on the artificial intelligence takeover of space and astronomy. My talk will be on Friday the 19th of February and the event is free to attend, so make sure you sign up. I'll put a link to the festival in the description box below. There's also a ton of other events on there, so do check them out too. As you may know, I teach the Machine Learning in Science Part 2 Master's course at the University of Nottingham. So in this week's video, I figured I'd give you a taster of some of my research, but also what's to come in my talk by making a video about a paper I published back in 2019, detecting solar system objects with convolutional neural networks. So at the time, I was working on ESA's Euclid mission, the Dark Universe Explorer. The goal of this space telescope, which by the way, still hasn't launched yet, it's been pushed back again for a current planned launch of late 2022. Its goal is to help us understand the elusive dark matter and dark energy. The former being essentially the glue holding our galaxies and galaxy clusters together, and the latter being the cause of our universe's expansion. To do so, the telescope images over a third of the sky, measuring the gravitational lensing effects of galaxies. This is a distortion of galaxies due to the gravitational presence of dark matter. Just like how Earth's gravity affects you and me, pulling us to the ground and keeping us from floating off into space, the gravity of any mass, including that of dark matter, in between us and a faraway galaxy, will pull on the light of the galaxy as it travels towards us. This in turn distorts the shape of the galaxy as seen from Earth. If galaxies were perfectly circular, then it would be obvious if there was a dark matter influence. The galaxies would be what we call sheared. But galaxies, unfortunately, are not perfectly circular. They are elliptical in shape and take on all sorts of orientations. We can average over the ellipticities of many galaxies to make sure that they cancel out to zero, and this would indicate our field of view is dark matter free. But if they don't cancel out, and there's a net ellipticity or shear, then we've mapped some dark matter. Now, there's a second problem here. Galaxies are not the only elliptical things on the sky. It turns out that our observations are played with asteroids. That's right, asteroids orbiting in our solar system are slow moving on the sky, but when we take a long exposure image, they can appear like an elliptical galaxy. They're not all bad though. We can learn a lot from these asteroids themselves too. For example, to learn about the formation of our solar system that we live in. In addition, we have cosmic rays. These are highly energetic particles with an origin outside of our solar system. They hit our telescope detectors and saturate the pixels, looking like big streaks. Lastly, we also have stars, which through imperfections on the telescopes and our observations, they may appear non-point-like too. And they're supposed to look point-like. All of these can get confused for sheared galaxies, and if we're not careful in removing them, then we might infer the presence of dark matter when there really isn't any. Now, Euclid will produce close to a terabyte of data per day. It will observe over 2 billion galaxies and 140,000 solar system objects like asteroids and comets. We could look at each of these images that Euclid observes in some part of the sky and take the difference with images taken at an earlier time to identify by eye any movement which would point to an asteroid. However, that would take forever. So in order to process that much data quickly and accurately, we need to use machine learning. In machine learning, algorithms are used to search for patterns in data. 
In my paper, I used a supervised machine learning method known as convolutional neural networks that is specifically developed to work with image data. In supervised learning, we know which images are asteroids, which ones are galaxies, which ones are cosmic rays, and which ones are stars. Then it's just a matter of the algorithm trying to find the similarities in these images that can help us identify these subgroups. This is known as training, and it can take a little while, but once it's completed, you can show the algorithm a completely new image that it's never seen before, and it would be able to tell you which of these categories it's likely to fit in. This takes a fraction of a second, so we would be able to filter out all of these different types of objects in real time. In my research, I found that using this method, we could correctly identify asteroids with a 96% accuracy. That's much better than any human, and the result would be consistent every time too. Not like humans who tend to be subjective. Sometimes they think they see something, and other times they doubt themselves. In addition to this, I found that we could also adapt the method to find out how fast these asteroids are moving. This is hugely important, especially if you're worried that an asteroid might be on a collision course with the Earth. So there you have it. That's just one of the many applications of machine learning in space. If you're interested in learning more, remember to sign up for my talk. All the links are in the description box below, but in the meanwhile, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe.